Hey gang, Charmel Punch here. This is kind of a two-part video. Um, I'm going to splice in some stuff at the end. Uh, one is about uh, kerosene heater, okay? Specifically, the DuraHeat 2304, which I have been unable to find cotton wicks for. Um, and I'll get to why that's important in a moment. Uh, the other part of this video is about uh, wintertime self-defense and self-defense in general about uh, how we how we practice in these safer situations okay I feel like you guys are just just being stuck staring at my at my little Mr. Bojangles there so I'm gonna I'm set you up a little differently. How's that? Let's see. Is that gonna be okay? Yeah, that'll be good. So, yeah. All right. So in the winter time, I mean, not here, obviously. I mean, I was sweating today. I'm just wearing this because of the breeze. Keep it out of my ears, you know. Um, wife says I look like a Russian, uh, Russian woman. I don't know, do I? Anyway. It slows, you know, depending on what you're wearing. These are actually, you know, a little bit thinner gloves, but they still make my deploy time for even my knife probably three to five times as long, you know, uh, time-wise. And for drawing a pistol, if you're, you know, maybe wearing a, a long coat, it could be covered, all right? So we've got several movements to get the pistol out. And then, are our, 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 our gloves going to get in the way? Are we going to be first be able to work whatever mechanism it is? Is it a thumb brake? You know, um, the little uh, finger lever on the fast draw Blackhawks and, and light type holsters. Uh, so, we've got this time. How much time is it taking us, right? And is our glove going to fit through A, the trigger guard, B, allow us to, you know, uh, other order? allow us to operate the opening you know mechanism for drawing and everything so some things that we can do to make it a little better because 999 times you go out everything's cool but that one time that one time you do not want to end up being fumbly fumbly and, and get gutted alright first I always want to say running is the best solution to many of life's problems such as a guy with a knife or a baseball bat or something. You book. Now, if you're not alone, you've got a woman or child or a buddy who can't move that quickly. Now, uh, priorities change, right? Because we don't leave someone behind. So if we got to defend ourselves, it should be done intelligently. So bear that in mind. Some of the things that we can do, uh, mechanics gloves are, you know, they allow a greater degree of, of tactile uh, ability. Uh, they're thinner gloves, they fit to your hands, and they can be pretty darn warm. Um, those are something that's good to have, even if you just wear it on your right hand, you know, or your left hand, whatever your hand is that you use. Next, I'm going to add a bunch of cane stuff uh, at the end that I was talking about. Um, that's it. You know, maybe we want to modify how we are carrying our self-defense item, you know, or maybe we want to modify our protective gear to make easier you know, uh, deployment easier, you know, like that. And I just want to reiterate that uh, a knife, if, if you've got a guy with a knife threatening you, pulling a knife basically guarantees that you both are going to end up looking like the after picture of the Mussolini family, all right? This is a last resort, last resort, because everybody comes out fugly when the knives come out, okay? Um, I'd, I'd rather you use a gun against a guy with a knife, okay, than pull your knife out, because it ain't like TV, okay, where... The hero gets a like that, and he gets time to look at it, and 
it's just a little teeny scratch, right? Because you got cat like reflexes. Well, out here, man, you just get opened up. Go ahead and Google some up. Uh, Google some images and knife wounds. And, and you'll see what I mean, okay? Um, like I said, cane. Cane is what I recommend. I'll add some, some cool cane tips and, and stuff like that. My thoughts on carrying it. I'll splice that on. But now, we're going to talk about this. And the fact that kerosene is ridiculously expensive, okay? I, I had no clue. I remember kerosene would be cheaper than gasoline. <laughs> you know, I had no clue and I needed a heater for my shop and for my uh, for my new heat treating rig. I needed to be able to generate a good amount of heat and electricity. You know, hi cutie. Hi, what are you doing? You know, electricity's getting more costly. So I thought, hey, kerosene, and I, I, I got this thing on sale before I checked what kerosene prices are like. I guess I'm stuck in the 80s. I don't know. So anyway, one of these little things of kerosene, which is all I can find, the filling stations no longer carry it. I can't get it at the pump. You know. Um, so they sell this 1K heater fuel. All right, this uh, clean strip and. and I think there's maybe one other brand. What is it, cutie pie? What is it? Alright, just one. Just one. Keep the kibble in here, you know. Just carrying it in a baggie, it just becomes a mess. Alright, go lay down. Good girl. Good girl. That's it. All gone. So anyway, they want $11. You believe that for one gallon? Are you kidding me? So, I looked and I searched and I hunted for alternatives. You know, because now I've got this heater, what am I gonna put in it? Ain't gonna be like Mad Max and put some gasoline in there or something, you know? So I looked and I found that since the diesel has mostly all over the US been changed to ultra low sulfur diesel all right u l s d that with a little addition you can use diesel in these kerosene heaters okay now many people are adding isopropyl alcohol okay but the problem was that that only worked in heaters that had 100 percent cotton wicks Otherwise, they get this smoking mess, all right, and the wick getting gummed up and funky and everything. So, what can I use? What can I do? Well, I went ahead, I had it out here, acetone, all right? And all I added was maybe one half of an ounce to an ounce to one gallon of diesel fuel shook it vigorously waited you shook it vigorously some more and then put it in the kerosene heater all right you can stay you can stay I'm not going to over you so I ran it for about two and a half three hours okay and I had the uh, carbon monoxide sensor in there with me all right i wasn't in there first and i tried it outside you got to try it outside okay you don't don't do this right away just in your shop or in your house make sure that it's going to run okay for you all right uh, so this is a 3c wick which is a cotton base fiberglass top and for some reason the alcohol isopropyl alcohol doesn't seem to go very well with that I, I can't remember how many people had good experiences with uh, isopropyl alcohol. So I'm going to go ahead and put the rest of this in the tank. I didn't want a full tank if I was going to have to dump it or something like that. 
And I like using this little doohickey because just it's usually a mess if I try to pour stuff. And this is just a little a little siphon doohickey here. You want to get it up above. And once you get her going, it just kind of runs on its own. Pay attention to your fuel gauge. And now, I want you to be safe. You're going to try this, you try it outside. You use your own carbon monoxide sensor. I don't want you going in and doing something different or whatever and, and asphyxiating yourself, okay? you got to be safe. And I want to, want to go ahead and put the caveat that this company says use only the 1K uh, kerosene, the 1K type heater fuel. There we go. Now with this, you undo the little cap at the top to make sure that it pisses out any extra. That way you get fewer dribbles, okay? I don't know why they make this accordion. I mean, I guess for extra flexibility, but that accordion really holds the really holds the drips, man. So I've been like dangling it out here. Alright. So I have run this, like I said, approximately three hours. And I had zero parts per million. Or parts per billion, I misremember what it is. I think it's per million on the carbon monoxide sensor. What are you doing, stinky dogs? Now, the way that these light, you've got a wick here, and you're going to turn this sucker up, okay, until it kind of reaches the end. Pop this open. This has a little deal here, and it pushes a. Uh, a, a little wire filament over and the batteries make it heat up and then it starts your wick so here I'll, I'll bring you over and I'm gonna see because one of the things that people said about using the diesel fuel was that it did not want to light and sure enough it's not wanting to light oh there she goes I do have a little bit of a breeze now that was actually a better light than I've gotten with the uh, with the kerosene that was a very even even lighting and they want you to jiggle this to make sure it's seated correctly after you use that because some people just want to jam their foot down on the uh... that thing right clang clang and knock the knock the heater a uh, little great askew So anyway, they now want 11 bucks to 12 bucks a gallon for kerosene, okay? Which is not a cost-effective form of heating, you know? I'm better off just urinating on myself to stay warm. Um, but I got the diesel fuel for like 2.30 a gallon. And if you've got number one diesel in your area, which is what I think they use in the wintertime, you buy that, that's the best. I, I don't think you have to jimmy that around much at all. Alright? Um, this is diesel number two, what we have here. generally move that that little deal around quite a bit we have diesel number two here because it doesn't really get that cold and like I said I added acetone just plain 100% acetone um, about I'd say maybe half an ounce maybe maybe a shot glass you know your regular shot glass not a double and I added that in here and just shook the Hades out of it, okay? Made sure it was like nice and thoroughly mixed and I gave it some time so that it could mix in together. All right, come on over. 
So you see what we got going on in there? It's looking pretty good. I want to move this around, try to even things up a little bit. There. And now as it warms, the fuel will vaporize more quickly, okay? And you're going to get faster wicking as everything warms up, so you will want to turn it down. All right? And I'm not quite ready to turn it down yet. I think I've got a breeze kind of hopping up underneath of there too. So that's kind of funking things up. Yeah, definitely got a breeze. I'm going to move this bugger over here. Hope we get a little bit of a windbreak. It's looking pretty good. And I've got no, let me see. I've got really barely a smell at all. The only smell that that I that I have is the uh, little bit of diesel that I dribbled on the uh, around the the fill cap here. So we're looking good. We got a good stable flame, and I'm already ready to turn it down just a tiny bit. Not too much, otherwise you'll get it where it starts to poop around and everything. Uh-oh, my batteries are about to die, gang. All right, so this is a little hack to save you some money, all right, on um, on your, your heating your shop, whatever you need, okay? Because electricity is pricey, man. And I can run this sucker. I put in almost half a tank, all right? And I ran it for, like I said, about almost three hours and used maybe a quarter of a tank and it's got about a one gallon tank maybe a little more but uh, I used less than a quarter of a tank for that that three hours so you know and that the amount of heat that this puts off with the diesel is I don't know I don't know how much hotter diesel burns but it's noticeably warmer I put that out in my uh, in my heat treating rig and it just got hot fast, man. It was nice. It's cut my time down a little bit. So, you know, it's just uh, just another way to try and make it by in a world that's just getting harder and harder on folks, you know. So, diesel and acetone. And I will give an update, see how this wick does. I'll see how it looks. And if I continue getting good performance, all right? I shouldn't keep running it out here in the uh, in the breeze though. Yeah, that breeze is hard enough. It's blowing. I can feel the warmth here, and I'm I'll show you. I'm this far away, and I still feel the warmth coming at me. That wind blowing hard enough. Breeze. All right. So I better go because yeah, the camera's blinking furious red on the back there. Uh, real quick though, I'll show you how to extinguish it. Okay, or how I do it. Um, here's your quick extinguish knob, okay, right here, but I don't go for that right away. I turn it down first, and then I hit that, and that drops the wick down where it's choked off outside of the presence of oxygen, and like that. So, there you go, super simple, easy little hack. Do your research before you try it, okay? Um, I did. And just be safe, all right? Get yourself a little uh, carbon monoxide sensor, okay? You can get them on Amazon. Uh, your Ace Hardware can order them for you, all right? They don't charge you anything to order stuff out of their catalog, and they have them. I misremember what I paid. I think I paid like uh, 18, 18 or 20 bucks for mine, and, and Ace ordered it for me. I'm sure you can get them through, uh, through your Walmart or Home Depot, maybe. That I'm not sure. It's worth a try, though. So, that's it, gang, all right? You live free, punch hard, and bend hard. And be good to yourselves, okay? And if you can save a buck here, save a buck there, a penny saved is a penny earned, right? So, 
Y'all be good to yourselves. Thank you for coming and hanging out with me. Bye now. Hey gang, Brown Punch here. Django here, coming at you. Just want to do a quick little uh, uh, self-defense tips and hacks. All right. Now, of course, it's not that cold here, so I'm not bundled up. But well, not just for winter time, okay? For for everyday life, it is rare that a self-defense situation involves optimal uh, conditions for you, okay? The attackee. We'll just make up some words here. Why not? So, we're going to just go through a few, a few things, you know, that, that might help out, okay? Uh, first off, I don't, I don't have any bulky gloves. I've got work gloves and stuff like that. But we're going to go ahead and, and deal with uh, deciding what we're going to carry, how we're going to modify our carry, and perhaps modify our protective gear to... Uh, as a consideration for being able to utilize our self-defense items, okay? So, let's pretend that I'm wearing a parka. It's actually pretty warm here. Sorry to yell where it's not warm. So, okay, you know, we got something going on like, Hey, you, give me all your money. You know, the bad guy's got, got a, a knife or something, alright? And we're not able to, to run. So, now I'm over here, and... I'm, I'm pawing because I can't operate this as quickly as I do under optimal circumstances, all right? Um, the fingers, are they going to hang up and not get into the trigger guard? You know, like that, okay? So, we go ahead and maybe we consider a uh, different form of self-defense or maybe choose some different gloves now um, you know you probably don't want to walk around with these uh, these knuckle gloves these tack gloves on but mechanics gloves um, they allow you to have a tactile sensation the fingers fit more tightly so you can utilize your your gear easier all right another one all right so we're back to back to our gloves here and while I do not recommend a knife as your first line of self-defense, that should be a last, very last resort. I mean, is if you pull a knife when another person's got a knife, nobody comes out clean, all right? It's just a bad, bad situation. Give me all your money, he says. And I'm like, now here I am, and I'm trying to get this knife out, and it takes me ten times as long to deploy this as it does with bare hands. So we may want to consider a fixed blade, and that's even for like if we're working, using it, you know, at a rate, uh, you know, on a regular basis to, to cut things at work. Okay. Um, so these are things that you need to think about when considering self-defense. Okay, is it's a whole different deal rolling in the dojang than it is out here, you know, practicing out here. We can practice all these techniques in these ideal circumstances where we're wearing comfortable clothing, we've got, um, you know, uh, we, we've got our sparring partner who moves nice and slow for us and, and, you know, like that. But out here, things are gnarly. Things happen really fast. And so I am going to talk about what I consider to be, you know, just a, a, a really good all-around uh, self-defense item. A good cane or a stick, okay? A good cane or a stick. Whatever you're wearing, you're wearing gloves, you're going to move pretty much just as fast, all right? This is something that you can deploy quickly, get your first strike in fast, all right? And irregardless of whatever gear you're wearing. And if you feel self-conscious about it, then simply um, affect a limp, you know, or or just act like you're using it if you're self-conscious about having a self-defense item you know you got a trick knee or, or, or whatever you know if you feel self-conscious about it all right it's it's easy to get get your cane into gear you know no matter what kind of cane you have except I will say that those uh, those hollow aluminum canes those are super lightweight and really it's uh just maybe a couple steps above using a car antenna. Uh, I'd recommend um, 
you know, of course, I got to mention my canes, but uh, there are a lot of a lot of different canes. The truck stops sell uh, a cane that's got like a looks like a doorknob on top, and those uh, the hook handled wooden canes those have some weight to them. Um, make sure you pick a good you know good heavy one, and like that. Then you got some oomph behind it, you know, and you can get them going pretty fast. Those uh, the one with the shepherd's hook sort of uh, top. You can actually bring that up. You got your hand like that. You can bring that up quickly for a jabbing type strike. You know, put your hand however you want. You step into it. You know, drive for center to, to push them back, and then you can snap out that good strike. All right. Um, a lot of different ways to, to get your your cane moving. You know, we've talked about all of this before. You probably probably bored to tears about it. Um, you know some quick ways some quick ways to get it moving you know you can do a levering type strike too where you move this hand one inch and you get several inches of movement because of where you're placing your lever or your fulcrum my apologies so that's a quick way to get it moving just a quick upward strike to the the grill you know and then you can get a better hit a better uh, better grip and get your hits going. Really, really, really recommend a cane for just about uh, any of your your close quarter scrapping, you know. And I'm not not extreme close quarters because once you're in tight, you can't really get get a cane moving, you know. Um, when I say close quarters, I'm talking you know like a medium range, not extreme close quarters combat. And at that point, man, it's just like. Uh, it's just root hog or die once you get in too close. Um, better just break out the teeth and nails. And then you know if you got to, if it's if it's come to that man, where they piling on you, you know then then you do what you got to do to survive. Um, but yes, yeah, so these are all considerations, not just in winter time, but what do you wear? What are you wearing? Uh, are you are you at least rolling? You know, one out of every ten times with your sparring partner doing it in street clothes, you know, because it's just a completely different feel. Um, it's just stuff that I thought, you know, might be a good time to talk about that, especially the wintertime hacks, because it's just, it's uh, a lot different. There's a hawk just right there. I just think they're gorgeous, you know. Um, so, a good cane. Uh, some kind of striking implement, you know, um, that's going to give you some distance that you can really generate some force with. Because if someone's attacking you, it's because they've already decided that you're not valuable to this world. You're not a valuable human being. They've decided that you are worth only what they can take from you. And that is a situation that you need to, to quell quickly. And a good striking implement and do that do that most swiftly um, lots of good ways to get it in now if you do not have a bum knee or you're not actually using the cane as a walking aid and you're, you're carrying it uh, for self defense then you can choose some different options about which side you want that on alright and that's you know let that depend on how you are, have decided your first strike is going to be and I recommend that you practice these if you carry it in your off hand then you know you can bring it up right into position whatever cane you're using you can bring it up right into position but it's not quite as quick as you know one of your quick strikes or a jab strike that we're going to bring into and step into all right to create some distance but you know it's still fairly swift fairly swift bring it up step into it all right bring it up step into it just snap that bugger out there um yeah that's a good one fairly swift depending on where we're at you know and this is going to also call for situational awareness all right make sure that you're not just you know just true la lu la lu la just just walking right next to a blind corner cut around a little bit you know say uh, say this here 
plant pot. I hope you can see that. This, this here plant pot is my blind corner. I'm not just going to roll right past it. I will want to give myself some room so I come out and I've got reaction time. Okay? Look at my boy dog, man. Just anything, anything that don't move. Anything that don't move, that boy will wee wee on. Why am I still wearing gloves? I'm starting to pop a sweat. So, all things to think about, all right? Uh, a good baton is, is an excellent tool. Um, you know, you try to get hold of your heavier ones. Because, again, we don't want to be just kind of slapping around with a car antenna, okay? We want something that's going to disable our attacker or at least cause so much pain that they're going to leave us be. And those batons, while they hurt, you've really got to got to hit really hard in specific spots to get a disabling type effect. Um, and it takes a lot of work, you know, to be able to utilize one of those. And again, so with the baton, our uh, our deploy would look something like a snap out and then a strike. So it's not quite as quick as getting your cane into mo motion, you know. Um, I say um a lot, but you know, whatever. It's just something to think about. All right. I guess that's it. I guess I said everything I I can think of right now. But this is just some tips and hints and hacks for self-defense, specifically winter time, but any time of year. It's something to think about. What do I have? How am I going to bring it into motion? How fast can I get that going, you know? Because these are things to think about. How fast can I get it into gear? And is this a, a case of need to use deadly force? Or is this two guys that just want to throw me a beat down? You know, because once you pull out the deadly force, a knife, a gun, then there's rarely any turning back. It just is really fugly from there on out. So you want to be pretty darn sure that's a situation that calls for it, you know? Me, I don't really make any pretense. I carry my cane, you know, just like this right here. So I can bring that up into the chin or into a weapon hand, that upward movement, and then it's just nighty night bunny rabbits, you know? Everybody going to sleep. If I miss the the top of the, the crown there, then I'm hitting the shoulder. Here's some collarbones going. Things getting disconnected. So I don't know. Consider. Consider what your self-defense plans are. Alright? And what comes into play even faster are your hands. You know, depending on what's going on, you can always get your hands moving pretty quick. But if they're holding anything other than uh, other than air in their fist, you want to keep some distance. Man, you don't want to get hit. And if you can, run. All right? So always have your running boots on, I guess. All right, so live free, punch hard, and defend yourselves intelligently, all right? Be good to yourselves because you're worth it and I dig you. Catch you later. Bye-bye.